Fortune of Father. Starring John Forsythe. Sorry, Ann Rose. In now three weeks since, Cousin Charlie promised to pay back what he borrowed from me. Not made of money. Not smiling, friendly finance company. <laughs> Tired of excuses from black sheep who live in family tree. Either he pay up quick or get my boss, Mr. Greg, to sue him. That final word, Ann Rose. Goodbye. Uh, Hi, Peter. What are you mumbling about? Words not for innocent young ears. <laughs> What's the matter? Are you upset about something? Upset? I'm not upset. <laughs> Why do you think i upset? Just wish your cousin Charlie on slow boat to China with leak in bottom. <laughs> cousin Charlie, huh? What's he done now? Don't want to talk about it. If I talk about it, I lose temper. M Peter, maybe I could help if you discuss it with me. I appreciate your concern, Miss Kelly, but discussion do no good. Why not? Because this adult problem, and you not adult yet. <laughs> On the other hand, I very adult. Don't let name house boy fool you. I'm not exactly a child. I'm sure there are lots of times I could help if people would just tell me what's going on. Please, Peter. Have cookie, Miss Kelly. Don't bother pretty head. You're just like Uncle Bentley. He never tells me anything either. He comes home from the office worried, upset. But will he confide in me? Not Uncle Bentley. You wouldn't be interested, dear. I'd rather not discuss it, honey. This adult problem, niece Kelly. Boy! Boy? What am I around here? A stick of wood or something? Don't understand it. I got problem. She get mad. Miss <laughs> Kelly? Fooey! Okay. Two fooey is enough for one day. <laughs> Hi, darling. Peter! Hi, Uncle Ben. How's everything at school today? Fine. Good. Yes, Mr. Gray? Oh, Peter, what time will dinner be ready? Dinner be ready at 7 o'clock. Dinner always ready at 7 o'clock. All right, I only asked. Name me one time dinner not ready at 7 o'clock. Well, since you pinned me down, it was late last Tuesday, and it was even later than that on Friday. I say name one time, just because your lawyer don't try to make a big case of it. I'm sorry. What am I around here? Stick of wood or something? What's the matter with him? Don't ask me, it's an adult problem. <laughs> Well, I've got a little time to go over some notes, darling. Excuse me. Is it something important? Mm-hmm. It's for Mr. Bagshaw. Well, who's Mr. Bagshaw? Oh, man I represent. What are you doing for this, Mr. Bagshaw? Oh, it's a very involved matter, honey. I, uh, you wouldn't be interested. But I would. I'm interested in anything you do and anything you say, when you say it. <laughs> darling, forgive me. This deal of mine isn't going so well. There's no reason for me to bury my nose in a bunch of papers and ignore you. I'll tell you what, whenever you want to talk, we'll talk, all right? Wonderful. How's everything at school today? You asked me that. What'd you say? I said fine. Well, that's good. Honey, excuse me, I've got some figures here. I just have to check. Math is my best subject. Maybe we could go over the figures together. Uh, these aren't the kind of figures that you study. You see, this is a, it's a very complicated legal matter. It's too, well... Uh... I know. Too adult. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's it. Would you like it better if I just sat here and licked on a lollipop? Not before dinner, dear. Uncle Bentley? Mm-hmm. When I told you that everything was fine at school today, it wasn't true. Hmm, really? I flunked my history test. Well, that's good, honey. Oh, what's the use? Hello? 
Oh, hello, Mr. Bagshaw. What's that? Well, yes, yes. Why, of course. No, no, no trouble at all. I'll be there in 20 minutes. Good right, sir. You going out, Uncle Bentley? Yes, Mr. Bagshaw wants to see me. I feel a little like a puppet on the string, but he is my biggest account. Is something wrong? Yeah, plenty. See, Mr. Bagshaw is president of the Bagshaw Trust Company, and they want to put up a big building... Peter! Darling, you see my briefcase around here? You place? call me Mr. Gray? Yes, I put my briefcase right down there, and I can't seem to find it. <laughs> now, don't hold dinner for me. I'll pick up a sandwich along the way, darling. See you later. Keep up the good work in history. Honey, I know how important it is to exchange conferences, and we'll start just as soon as I get back. Know how you feel, Miss Kelly? Uncle don't confide, but I confide. You, you're just as bad as he is. You want to know why not happy with Cousin Charlie, family beatnik? Yes, I'd like to. All right, sit down. I try not to lose temper. Well, he borrowed money and not paid it back. He act like I, U.S. government, and he, foreign country. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? Very simple. I get Mr. Greg to sue him. If Cousin Charlie not pay back, he's going to wake up some morning on the inside looking on the outside. Shouldn't you talk it over with him before you turn Uncle Bentley loose on him? Too late for talk. Time to wave big stick. I still think you should talk it over with Cousin Charlie. That because you're a nice little girl with kind heart. But no good in case a cousin who chisel. Must be handled in adult way. Oh no, not that again. Adult. Boy! <laughs> That makes three fooies. Mr. Bagshaw, Pernell said he wouldn't sell it to you at any price. He, uh, he doesn't seem to like you. Doesn't like me? Mm -hmm. Ha! I'm the one who shouldn't like him. The scoundrel once tried to poison me. Poison you? I made the mistake of eating in his wretched cafe. When I complained of indigestion, he said I was lucky I had any stomach at all, the way I wolfed my food. You never told me about that, sir. What possible difference could that make? Vernal's greasy little restaurant is the only thing holding up the construction of a 30-story bank building, and I've made one simple request of you. Buy him out. He won't sell. Then I'll build around him. That'd be quite a bank, with a chef tossing a salad in the cashier's cage. <laughs> I don't think that would be wise, sir. Greg, I'm paying you for results, and either I get them, or I start looking around for another attorney. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Bagshaw. <laughs> Black coffee, Mr. Gray. Why do I put up with that man, Kitty? I ask you, why? Why? Because he owns a dozen bank buildings and pays you a fat retainer. <laughs> Why did I ever study law, anyway? I should have studied medicine. My professor said it. I remember it as, as if it was just yesterday. He said, Bentley, with those hands, you'd have made a brilliant brain surgeon. Uh, here, sip this slowly. I could have been a dedicated man in white on the staff of some great hospital. Healing the afflicted, curing the sick. Chasing the nurses. Chasing the nurses. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Gregg. I just tried to make you feel better by changing the subject. All right, all right. Try another subject. Uh, could I have Thursday afternoon off? My sister's having a baby shower and... Wrong subject? But I've been planning this shower for my sister. Your sister will just have to take her shower without you. But Mr. Gray... No. Where are you going? Out for another round with this Frenchman. <laughs> Sometimes I think I should have gone to medical school myself. <laughs> Just tell me, Stuart, does your father confide in you? Oh, yeah. He confides in me all the time. Really levels with me. He leveled with me this morning. He did? Mm-hmm. He said, no, you can't have the car. <laughs> Kelly, that's why I'm here. The dance is tomorrow night and eight other kids are counting on us. We need your uncle's car. Forget it. Uncle Bentley's in such a bad mood lately, he'd probably snap my head off. But, Kelly... I'm not in a very good mood myself. <laughs> Kelly, all I... Stuart! Get feet off chair. I'm in voice mood. <laughs> What's going on around here, anyway? I think I hear Uncle Bentley now. If you want to borrow the car, you better ask him yourself. All right, I will. I like your uncle, and I think he likes me. I'll put it right to him. Hi, Uncle Bentley. Hi, darling. Mr. Gregg, 
I've got a question I'd like to Stuart, answer. Stuart, what are you doing here? Well... You know, it's almost dinner time. Well, yeah. Kelly invite you to stay to dinner? No. Don't you think you better run along home? I guess so. <laughs> Stu, why didn't you ask the question? Gee, all I had time for was answers. <laughs> I'll see you, Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, dear, wait a minute. I'm sorry I'm so grumpy. I'm going to tell you about this entire deal. Because you think you should. No, no, darling, because I want to. Now, sit down. Let's take it right from the beginning. Now, there's this fellow that wants to buy this piece of property. Which fellow? That's my client, Bagshaw. Now, he wants to buy this property from this other fellow. What other fellow? That's a Frenchman who owns a restaurant. Hmm, see, it just occurred to me. According to the Flynn eviction case, I could make some trouble for him. For Flynn? <laughs> no, for the Frenchman. You know, he doesn't want to sell this restaurant to Mr. Bagshaw because he got indigestion eating there. Well, if that isn't the silliest thing I ever heard of. Two grown men acting that way. If they just get together and talk it over. Honey, that's a nice sentiment, but it doesn't usually... Take Ginger and me. Once we almost broke up because we were both having dates with the same boy. So we got together and talked it over and found the boy was really a goon that neither of us wanted and everything was fine. Well, that's charming, honey, but it wouldn't work in this case. I bet it would. Just get Mr. Bagshaw to try it and you'll see. Now, darling, I know your intentions are good, but I'm a better judge of this matter than you are, believe me. Uncle Ben. Honey, now, don't argue. Just because it worked for you and Ginger doesn't mean it would work for, for adults. Oh, no! There's that word again! You treat me like I'm a, I'm a three-year-old! I'm sorry I listened to your old story. And I don't want any dinner tonight. Boy! They're getting a big password around here. How could I have treated that child so thoughtlessly? I tell you, I'm ashamed of myself. I'm sure she'll forgive you if you just apologize. I tried to last night, but a door was locked. There was a sign on it that said, no adults allowed. Well, didn't you see your breakfast? It was even worse. We just sat there in a deathly silence. I never realized how much noise cornflakes make. You treated her like an infant, you know. If there was only some way that I could make her feel... make her feel important, show her how much I need her. Well, that's easy. It is, huh? How? Well, when I was Kelly's age, my father let me come down to his place of business now and then to help out. It was a real kick for me. Made me feel like I was needed, appreciated. Well, what kind of business was your father in? He owned a candy store. <laughs> but, but it's the principle of the thing. Why not try it? But bring her down. Let her help. Yes, why not? Kelly could do it. She's taking typing and shorthand in school. And, and I could teach her the switchboard in no time at all. Yes, that's it. Be a big booster of morale. You can take the afternoon off and go to your sister's shower. <laughs> Kitty. Uh, it, it's just a coincidence, Mr. Gregg. I'll call Kelly now. <laughs> Got the hang of it now? I yes, I think so. You put the key in this position for incoming calls. Right. And this is the key for Uncle Bentley's office. Right again. And you uh, push these down when you want to hold an incoming call. Uh, this is the headphone. I never use it because it musses up my hair. <laughs> Golly, this is exciting. Uh, just don't get too efficient. I'd like my job back tomorrow. <laughs> well, I gotta run along. Good luck, darling. Kitty. Oh, uh... Mr. Gregg, I'd like you to meet your new secretary, Miss Gregg. How do you do, Miss Gregg? How do you do, sir? I hope I'll give satisfaction. Well, I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied. Uh, will you step inside, please, and bring your book, Miss Gregg? Well, uh, I'm off to the baby shower. This is my present. It's the cutest little dress and a pair of baby booties. My best to your sister and uh, charge one of the booties to me. <laughs> Have a seat, Miss Gregg. 
I have this letter to dash off. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Uh, dear Mr. Bates, the attorney for the party you are suing has expressed a willingness to settle out of court. But, um, but I'm not satisfied with the amount offered. I'm sorry. Here we go. I'm not satisfied with the amount offered, since all the evidence seems to be in our favor. My advice... I'm terribly sorry. They are, darling. As a lifetime guarantee. <laughs> now, where were we? I am not satisfied with the amount offered. Mm hmm. Since all the evidence seems to be in our favor, my advice is to. My advice. Charlie, <laughs> <laughs> forget the dictation. I'll write the letter out in longhand. You can take it outside and type it up, all right? I'm terribly sorry, Uncle Forget Bear. it, dear. Forget it. Now, look, don't put any calls, so I have this brief to finish, and I don't want to be disturbed, all right? Yes, sir. And one other thing. Miss Gregg, I want you to smile. But I can't. I came smile. here Smile. Mademoiselle, let me, please. There. Thank you. I didn't even hear you come in. Mademoiselle, this is the first time I have known the typewriter to be a dangerous trap. Well, I'm not Mr. Gregg's regular secretary. I'm just filling in. I'm his niece. Well, my compliments to your uncle. Uh, may I see him, please? Well, I'm sorry, but he can't be disturbed right now. But I can take a message if you'll tell me what it's about. Oh, well, it is a matter of business. Uh, Monsieur Gregg's client, Monsieur Bagshaw, wishes to buy my restaurant. You're the Frenchman, Mr. Flynn. <laughs> Flynn? No, 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 not, not Flynn. No, uh, my name is Maurice Vernal. How could a Frenchman have a name like Flynn? Well, I thought maybe you got married to a... <laughs> that wouldn't do it. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Vernal. Bentley Gregg's office. Horace Bagshaw speaking. Mr. Gregg, please. He's busy now and can't be disturbed. Can't be disturbed? I'm sorry. Can I take a message, Mr. Bagshaw? Bagshaw? <laughs> but there's a gentleman here that maybe you'd like to speak to. A Mr. Vernal. Vernal? I don't want to talk to Mr. Vernal now or at any other time. Bagshaw, what did he say, mademoiselle? He hung up. Then I hang myself up also. And you can tell Mr. Gregg, I came in here to accept this offer. Now I will not sell at any price. <laughs> Is that the door that just landed here? What's going on out here? Well, I thought if I could get the two men to talk on the phone... What maybe... two men? Well, Mr. Bagshaw called and Mr. Vernal was here. And I thought if they... Mr. Vernal was here and Bagshaw called? Well, why didn't you let me know? Well, you told me not to disturb you. So when I tried to get Mr. Bagshaw to talk to Mr. Vernal, Mr. Bagshaw hung up and Mr. Vernal said that now he wouldn't sell at any price and then he stormed out and he slammed the door and then Kelly, you of in. all the... <laughs> forget it. Forget it. Just, just forget it. But, Stuart, the way things have been going at the office, I just haven't had a chance to ask him. Well, we gotta know about the car. The dance starts in five hours. I'm sorry, Stuart. I just couldn't. H hold it just a minute. Bentley Gregg's office. Hello, niece Kelly. This Peter. Got to talk to Mr. Gregg. Well, I'll see you. Hold it just a second, Peter. Bentley Gregg's office. Hello. This is Charlie Lee. Who? Peter's cousin Charlie. <laughs> now, he's been making a big thing out of a couple of bucks I owe him, threatening to have his boss sue me. I figured if I could talk to Mr. Gregg, why, I could square it. Well, I'll see you. Hold on a second, Charlie. Bentley Gregg's office. Bagshaw again. Is Mr. Gregg free yet? Oh, yes, Mr. Bagshaw. I know he wants to talk to you. Just a second, please. <laughs> 
Uncle Bentley. I've got Mr. Bagshaw on the line. Oh, good. Put him on, dear. Mr. Bagshaw. No, this is Stuart. <laughs> Stuart, what are you doing on this line? I'm phoning. <laughs> uh, now that I've got you on, Mr. Gray, won't you change your mind about... <laughs> Kelly, you've got Stuart on this line. What happened to Mr. Bagshaw? Oh, I'm sorry, Uncle Bentley. Hold it a minute. Mr. Bagshaw? No, this is Stuart. <laughs> well, where did I put Mr. Bagshaw? Mr. Bagshaw? No, this is Cousin Charlie. <laughs> Charlie? I'm trying to find Mr. Bagshaw. Were well, you looking in wrong places? <laughs> Hello, Kelly. Mr. Bagshaw? Just who did you connect me with, young lady? Some darn fool tried to borrow my car for tonight. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. He thought you were my uncle. If you'll hold on, I'll put you right through to Mr. Gregg. Is this Uncle Bentley or Peter? Boy, did your uncle hit the roof when I asked him about the car. That was Mr. Bagshaw! <laughs> hold it, Stuart. There goes another light. Mr. Bagshaw's up. Uncle Bentley's... Mr. Gregg's office. Uh, mademoiselle, this is Maurice Vernal. I, I have been thinking. I am a fair man. It is very urgent that I talk with your uncle at once. Oh, yes, Mr. Vernal. I'll put you right through to him if I can find him. <laughs> I've got Mr. Vernal on the line. Oh, that very nice, niece Kelly. <laughs> I'm getting pretty tired talking to Stuart. I don't know why you put me on with Peter in the first place. He hasn't got a car. I didn't put anybody on with anybody deliberately. I've got Mr. Vernal on the line. And praise heaven, the last person I talked to thought I had a cousin named Peter who was suing him. And that was Cousin Charlie. Cousin Charlie? I'll get Uncle Bentley on the line right now. Go ahead. Oh, thank you. Uh, Monsieur Gregg, this is Maurice Vernal. For now. <laughs> you get on this line. Back sure. I give up. Uncle Bentley, I quit. I can't do anything. I can't type. I can't take shorthand. I can't work the switchboard. I'm sorry I ever got into this. I just quit. Darling, you've just done the impossible. I, what? You've got back Sean Vernal talking to each other. I don't care. <clears throat> what do you know? Bagshaw admits that he does wolf his food. <laughs> Says his wife raises cane about it. <laughs> Darling, you had the right slant all along. Just, just let them talk to each other. They're getting together on a deal, and you did it. Uh, I did? Yes, you did. Hold still, Miss Gregg. You're about to become the first secretary I ever kissed. <laughs> Come on, smile. Smile. <laughs> Don't worry about the car, Mr. Gregg. I'll take care of it, just like it was my own father's. Well, try to take a little better care of it than that, will you, Stuart? <laughs> well, we better go. Hi, Peter. Sorry I'm not home to prepare dinner. You got no, Mr. Gregg? No problem. Kelly made dinner. Yeah, I hope all your personal difficulties are ironed out. Oh, that thing of past. Thanks to best secretary in city, girl wizard of switchboard. She fix everything. <laughs> really? Me? When big mix-up happen on telephone, I get stuck with cousin Charlie. We talk over problem like you advise, and tonight he pay me every cent. <laughs> wow! Well, uh, we'll be going. <laughs> Good night, Uncle Bentley. Good night, honey. Have fun. Bye, Peter. Good night. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, Peter. Where did Cousin Charlie get the money to pay you? From Aunt Rose. <laughs> Where'd she get the money? From me. She gave it to Cousin Charlie. I get it back from Aunt Rose. She's very honest. <laughs>